Hi, so in previous session we have uh, discussed uh, about the arboviruses and uh, we have learnt uh, how these arboviruses are uh, uh, coming to the human okay, and what kind of diseases it is causing. I gave you some generalized uh, uh, clinical feature and, uh, or symptoms uh, uh, when this arbovirus infect the human. Okay? And we have uh, in previous session we have also discussed uh, about uh, dengue virus which is a, uh, one of arbovirus and uh, this basically occurs uh, different uh, uh, levels of uh, uh, severity. Some individual are asymptomatic or others are maybe they show a very severe symptom and uh, that could be a life threatening. Okay. So, in continuation of arboviruses, uh, I am going to talk about uh, Zika virus. So, I will just uh, tell a bit about the Zika virus and then we will finish the arboviruses okay, and arbovirus and arboviral infections. Okay. So, Zika virus is a also a positive sense uh, RNA, it is also flavivirus and the family is uh, flaviviridae and uh, Zika was, uh, Zika virus was first uh, isolated in 1947 in Zika forest in Uganda. So, this Zika forest is in Uganda where transmission of uh, ancestral um, uh, African lineage of Zika virus was uh, limited to the enzotic circulation between non-human primate and uh, silvectic uh, Aedes mosquitoes um, or in previous session we have uh, uh, discussed about uh, uh, there are uh, uh, this uh, the, an enzotic uh, cycle is there. So, enzotic cycle is basically the uh, this is a transmission of a virus between mosquito and non-human primate. So, generally these this this is in in this circle okay the life cycle is in between the mosquito and the non-human primate okay. So, Zika virus is uh, basically uh, uh, following that uh, uh, this enzotic uh, uh, cycle okay but sometime this uh, mosquito uh, infect the human okay means uh, bite the human and then this this virus come in the human okay so there therefore we uh, we we can say that uh, sometime uh, there is a spillover infection to the human okay so so, here there is a very clear evidence uh, that uh, there is a enzotic uh, cycle, this virus is basically present in that enzotic cycle and then sometime it jump to the human uh, uh, when this mosquito bite the human. Okay. But uh, for dengue it was uh, not so clear. Okay. So, Zika is also uh, spread mostly by the bite of uh, uh, an uh, infected Aedes. Uh, uh, species, you know that it is Egypt, uh, Aegypti and uh, Aedes uh, albopictus. So, these are the two uh, key uh, species of uh, uh, mosquito, okay, which, which basically transmit the virus. Okay. Here, I am just showing the, the migration of Zika virus. Uh, so, if you follow up the blue line, then you can see that uh, this uh, uh, this Zika virus, uh, there is an African lineage and this African lineage moved to the, uh, uh, from Africa it moved to the Asia and it was, uh, uh, so first it was reported in uh, uh, Africa in 1947 and in 1966 it was reported in Asia. So, it is very interesting to understand how this virus is uh, moved from uh, uh, Africa to Asia. Okay. And uh, here you can see that uh, this is a, uh, this is quite, uh, this infection is quite dominant in Asiatic region. Okay. And there is a, uh, this migration of uh, Zika virus, Asian lineage. So, this Asian lineage moved to the uh, 
from Asia to Pacific in 2007 and in 2015 it was also reported in America and this American uh, lineage is also reported in Africa. So, here you can see that uh, how the transportation or uh, transmission of virus is uh, uh, taking place and if you see the timeline, so initially 1947 to 1966 it is a quite long duration, right. But from uh, uh, in, in recent year that is from 2007. Uh, this move from uh, Pacific to the uh, America. So, this is quite a uh, uh, short duration. Okay, You can understand uh, due to this uh, ease, in, uh, ease in movement of human okay, due to a lot of flights and all those things. So, so the, the movement of these viruses is also quite fast. Okay, So, in 2015 it is reported in America and the same strain is reported in the Africa. So, you can understand the, the, the importance of uh, uh, movement of a uh, human. Okay? So, this, this is not only uh, improving the trade or uh, economy of the country, but it also uh, transport uh, some uh, uh, non uh, which is not good uh, like a disease this, this uh, due to this uh, ease in transport this disease is also quite frequently uh, hooping from one continent to other continent and that is the reason uh, we we very this uh, this pandemic uh, the sars cov2 pandemic very rapidly spreaded all over the world okay so zika virus uh, statistic uh, here you can see that uh, uh, in in early years uh, this was not causing uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, epidemic, but now in, in recent year there is a increase in epidemic. Uh, here you can see that uh, in 2014 there is a uh, fr French Polynesia outbreak was there and there are several outbreaks and uh, if you see the number of cases uh, in recent year this is increased. Okay, Although if, if you see carefully from uh, 2017 to uh, 2019 it is a little plateau however there is a tendency to increase okay so the, the number of zika cases are increasing okay so it is a point of worry one has to really look at this uh, uh, thing and uh, one has to address uh, why this virus is increasing uh, and the number of cases is increasing okay so zika virus transmission and clinical features uh, so Basically, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, virus uh, infect uh, the individual through mosquito bite. Uh, it can also infect through uh, uh, sexual means, blood transfusion. Okay, and pregnant women can also uh, readily infect. As I uh, uh, told you in previous session, that uh, the pregnant woman has a little high temperature and they attract the mosquito. Okay. So, probably that is a one, one of the important reason. Okay. Patient with infection, most of the patient are uh, asymptomatic, okay. about 50 to 80 percent are asymptomatic, 50 to 80 percent infected individuals are asymptomatic. So, this is a good news. 20 to 50 percent individual, uh, they show some mild uh, uh, mild symptom and uh, very small proportion of people which is less than 1 percent they show severity. Okay? And what is the severe complication? So, the severity is uh, uh, mainly associated with uh, neurological thing and uh, muscular thing. Okay? So, neurologic is uh, 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 one of the disease, uh, it, it causes the Guillain bear uh, syndrome, acute uh, mile, myelitis okay? and uh, acute transient uh, polyneuritis. So, all this, uh, uh, these are associated with uh, dysfunctioning of neuron or spinal cord or uh, uh, myelin sheath which is present over the, uh, over the neurons. Okay? Menin, meningoencephalitis, it is uh, most likely the meninges, you know, there are membrane. Uh, our brain is 
brain and spinal cord is covered by the membranes, we, which we call it as a meninges. Okay. So, there, there is a, a inflammation of a, a brain uh, a meninges. So, that is why there, there is a meningoencephalitis. Okay. So, there is a uh, inflammation of a meninges. This uh, virus also affect the uh, eyes and uh, there are various uh, symptoms are associated with the eyes, okay, ocular, okay. That is hypertensive iridocyclitis. So, this is a basically inflammation of uh, uh, irish, okay. In eye, there is a irish, okay, this is the, the colored part, okay. Uh, there is a unilateral acute maculopathy, bilateral posterior uveitis and uh, uh, there is a chorioretinal scars. Okay. So, this is all associated with, uh, 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 with eyes. So, basically it affects the eyes in a very simple word. Okay. And uh, uh, these are more clinical terms. So, uh, I, 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 I told you a few of this. Uh, uh, basically, it affects uh, or cause the inflammation on different component of eyes. Okay. There is a thrombocytopenia uh, is uh, uh, pu uh, pura pura okay. and transient myocarditis. It affects the uh, heart also. So, overall case fat uh, fatality is uh, uh, less than 0. 0.01 percent, okay. Mostly among immunosuppressed uh, patient and those uh, with coexisting condition. So, uh, in case of SARS-CoV-2, uh, only, uh, not only, most of the fatality is associated with uh, those individual who are having some, uh, some, some pre-existing disease like a cardiovascular disease or um, metabolic diseases or cancer or something like that. So, this is also true for Zika virus. So, so the individual who is having these pre-existing problem may, uh, may be uh, more severely uh, affected by this virus. Okay. So, Zika virus transmission and clinical feature. So, uh, basically uh, this, uh, this uh, the patient, uh, the pregnant patient is uh, more uh, um, having a uh, or rather than patient, the developing fetus is much more prone to this Zika virus infection. About 20 to 30 percent fetus and neonates uh, uh, with uh, infection, they develop uh, various kind of problems like uh, sometime it may cause the fetal loss. Okay? It may also cause the congenital Zika syndrome. It uh, and in, in some cases, there will be asymptomatic, medium and long term uh, sequelae is, is also associated. But the good point is that uh, this is very small portion, not a small portion, yeah, I can say that uh, around one, one third of uh, infection uh, in pregnant women result to these kind of uh, problem. The, but two third is uh, basically or about 70 to 80 percent. Uh, the uh, the pregnant woman the fetus is a uh, kind of unaffected okay so uh, there must be involvement of the health of uh, uh, the the woman is also associated uh, maybe okay i i cannot say with uh, great confidence okay uh, maybe clinician can put uh, more light on this point so, this congenital uh, Zika syndrome is uh, having a series of uh, uh, complications and uh, clinical manifestations or symptoms. So, this is a severe microcephaly okay, and uh, collapsed skull. So, if you see this, uh, uh, this uh, symptoms, you can understand that uh, this virus is somehow affecting neuron, brain or uh, head head region, okay, cephalic region, okay. There are redundant uh, scalp skin, hip dislocation is also uh, associated with this. Development uh, delay in in fetus, visual impairment, as you can see in this uh, image, deafness, 
body tone abnormality so these are the uh, these are the uh, some of the symptoms uh, associated with uh, uh, zika okay zika infection so zika is uh, zika virus is associated with uh, guillain bear uh, syndrome and uh, here you can see that uh, zika virus associated uh, guillain bear syndrome is estimated to be 2 to 3 cases per 10000 zika virus infection so it's a it's a quite low number but yeah still this is a point of concern okay so this is a, you can see that this is a normal nerve and this is a, a nerve from a, a affected a, a individual who is developing this uh, syndrome and here you can see that this uh, there is a severe damage of myelin sheath okay and there is a expose of fiber okay so acute inflammatory demyelating polyneuropathy so it's it's affect a lot of uh, uh, all kinds of neuron okay peripheral neuron and uh, other okay there is a acute motor uh, axonal neuropathy and uh, the miller fisher syndrome uh, uh, a subset of uh, guillain bear syndrome characterized by uh, ophthalmophilia at ataxia araflaxia uh, so these are more technical terms so just i thought uh, to give you uh, just an idea you you need not to worry about uh, more clinical terms okay have been observed with uh, zika virus associated uh, guillain bear syndrome zika virus uh, associated guillain bear syndrome result in higher morbidity okay so it will cause the uh, very poor life okay and frequent uh, cranial neuropathy so so all these things are associated with uh, neurons okay so with this i will stop uh, uh, about the zika virus i just gave you a kind of quick overview about the uh, zika virus infection and with this i finish uh, the the week 10 and now we will move to the uh, week 11 where we will discuss about uh, uh, bacterial infection and I will take uh, tuberculosis in, in more detail. Thank you.